Hi guys, welcome at RC Shim. Thanks for coming to my hangar. This time this will really pay off for you because you will see a lot of different FPV cams compared, some minor reviews and most important the latency comparisons and also some latencies of the TV out from HD cams like the GoPro, the Firefly and the Foxy Legend. Check out the description of this video because it has a lot of links to the cams and I will also include a video index so you can skip the boring parts for you. Hope you enjoy it. This is a mini review of the Armway 700 TV lines cam. It comes with this nice mounting clip here. The cable it comes with is compatible with Immersion RC video transmitters, for example, but... So this is the advanced product of the little Armway 700 TV lines FPV cam. This is a, so to say, fully FPV backpack. It's the same cam in the front, but as a backpack you have a 200 milliwatt Armway transmitter. It doesn't come with this antenna here. It rather comes with a standard rubber ducky that you shouldn't use. If you shop one of these, get get the Armway SPV antennas as well, or go with the Immersion RC Spiral Nets or whatever you like. But get some skew planner wheel antennas, they are really good. On the back you have some connectors, but you really just need to supply some power. You have some dip switches to set the channel you want to fly in. 32 channels, it's about 11 grams. Yeah, and the, the really cool thing about this is you can supply 6 to 28 volts. It's a really high voltage range. Let's test the latency. But the screen I'm using here only has 30 frames, so the maximum resolution you get is 33 milliseconds. So sometimes it was 33 milliseconds away, and the other time it was about zero. So yeah, it's normal FPV cams are something between zero and 33 milliseconds. Let's also test the image quality and sharpness. I'm recording it also on the DVR of the field world. Sharpness diagram. And that's a darker part of my hunger. And the well lit one. This would be some high dynamic range. Oh. And then the shadows. Okay, that's that's really too much with the it's really a big wide angle. And light changes are ah, nice on the default. Okay, do some latency tests on the Immersion RC 25 milliwatts with Armway 700 TV lines cam hooked up. And it shouldn't be much different I guess but we will see this with this easy setup just a timer here and recording multiple iterations of the timer so all of those standard FPV cams I test here seem to be between 0 and 33 milliseconds of latency which is the, the level of accuracy that I get with this test setup So now I'm testing the ultra small 600 TV lines FPV cam I found on Surveil Zone for around $50. And it's a Sony Super HAD CCD. And what I like, it can cope with 5 to 22 volts. It comes with a 2.8 millimeter lens. And yeah, 600 TV lines are really more than, more than enough for me. Get a 
little impression of the image quality by filming on the screen. Yeah, looks good. Now we do the latency test. So yeah, just a mini review of this mini cam. It's, I will give you a link in the description to this model. Chose this because it's so ultra small and it would even fit here where I have the Fetchak TV cam, uh, 600 TV lines cam. So that's a directly competitor to the Fetchak cam and it, it also looks like the same cam. Um, what's nice is that the cable that comes with it can easily be adjusted to fit on an immersion uh, video transmitter. You just, uh, I just had to swap the red and the black wire here because red is 5 volts here, black ground and yellow is always the video. We don't need audio channels or we ha don't have a microphone here. So it's really easy to get it going with the immersion transmitter and it looks like a standard lens that you could swap easily to use a 2.1 millimeter cam. And in comparison to this Sony FEO board cam, you really see the advantage in these smaller board cams now. And also this Sony FEO needs 12 volts like many of the FPV cams do and I don't like being limited to 12 volts. So 5 volt is super easy because 5 volt is what I get from the immersion transmitter and up to 22 volts is cool because if you move to 4S or 5S or system, uh, systems you can uh, drive it directly off your main power. So, I mean it's Light adjustment is not super fast, but it's okay. And if you make it really dark, you have some noise level, it goes to black and white at some degree. This is the Sony FEO with 800 TV lines, the one from Runcam that I had some issues with latency. And I now want to see how much latency it really was that. Uh, felt like flying drunk. It was really interesting to see this test of the run cam and it was amazing to see a standard FPV cam having 100 milliseconds of latency. That's a killer. Before this I didn't think about testing a standard FPV cam because I trusted it will just give you tolerable latency. Because it was so high I tried to turn off uh, noise reduction and white dynamic range because I heard that maybe these functions will increase the latency but it didn't help. Still 100 milliseconds. Okay, so this is another latency test. This time with the, with the fireflies live out. And let's see how this compares. And as you see in the stills here, it's either 100 milliseconds or below. So it might be 80 to 90 milliseconds. Next up, we will record in 1080p60. And here I saw that it was much closer to 100 milliseconds each time I stopped. So it's a bit higher maybe. And here I had a 1080p60 recording and activated the gyro. And this introduced another slight shift up in the delay. So it's most of the times 100 milliseconds, but often over it. So something between 100 milliseconds and 133. Okay, so this is the so-called 4K mode with gyro on. Possibly the hardest thing to do for him. 4K mode, however, is 28 by 2100 resolution and as I guessed this is the hardest thing for the cam and it has 166 milliseconds all the time. For reference we see the GoPro 3 here without recording. It showed me between 
30 and 60 milliseconds, which is quite good if you ask me. And now while recording in 1080p60 with the GoPro 3, I get quite consistently 66 milliseconds, which is not bad either and a bit better than on the Firefly. The last of the HD cams with live out test here is the Foxy Legend. I mean the live out is pretty pretty nice, but it also has 100 milliseconds, which I prior tested isn't flyable with a mini quad that is not stabilized. You can get away with it on a plane or in stabilized quads, but not on acro mode flying. Surprisingly though the recording didn't increase the latency. Now it's 16 by 9 uh, compressed in a 4 by 3 format so you have black borders up and down but filled with data. Yeah you see the record time, the recording time and the mode you fly in. Oh, that's, that's quite nice. Light changes A bit slow, maybe. Yeah, slower than a dedicated FPV cam, but manageable. Uh, I also like the the battery symbol on the live out. That's nice. Okay, so thanks for watching this review. Hope it helped you. And yeah, maybe I find a better way to measure the, um, the latency sometimes, but. With the limitation of 30 frames on the FPV monitor, I can't get it m much more precisely than this. But as I said, um, something between 30 and 40 milliseconds is really okay, and 100 milliseconds already feels weird in the air. So, thanks for watching, bye!